Now I'm going to show you how to take a complex number and change it into polar form. So if you have a complex number that's in, this is rectangular form, when it's in rectangular form and you want to put it in polar form, this is polar form here. And what you would do is you would find the absolute value, which is the R, and then you would multiply that by the quantity of cosine of the angle plus I sine of the angle. And sometimes you'll see it written as this, R cis theta, which is shorthand for saying cosine, I, and then sine. So, for example, if your R, which is your absolute value, is, say, 2, and then the angle that it makes, maybe, say, it's 30 degrees, it might be written like this shorthand. But really what it's saying, if you write the whole thing out, is cosine 30 degrees plus I sine 30 degrees. This angle and this angle will always be the same when you're writing it in polar form because what you're doing, when you write it in polar form, if this is my point and my absolute value is 2, which is another way to look at it is your radius, and the angle in which you swing open is 30 degrees, you're writing that this is your radius and then it's opening 30 degrees. Okay, so the things that you need to know, if it's in rectangular form, and that's what these two examples are here in A and B, it's in rectangular form, and we're going to change it to polar form. So we need to know our R, value of R here, and we need to know our theta. So we need to know how long the radius is, or the absolute value, the distance for, for that point from the origin, and then what angle it sweeps open to. So if we look at the first example, the point negative 1, negative square root of 3i, so the real part is negative 1, and the imaginary part is negative square root of 3. So somewhere over here is the point negative 1, negative square root of 3i, because this is my imaginary axis and this is my real axis. So what I need to do is find my r, or my absolute value, and then I need to find the angle that it sweeps open to. And then I plug the r and the theta, my angle, into that form. So to find my value of r, that's easy. I just use Pythagorean theorem. So I would take negative 1 squared plus negative square root of 3 squared, and that's going to give me my r squared. Remember, this is finding the absolute value, so we're using right triangles to do that. So that's 1 plus 3 is equal to r squared. So r squared is 4, which means r is 2. So I now know that my value of r is 2. But now we need to find our angle. So how does this, how far does this angle sweep open? Because this is in the third quadrant, we want to make sure that the angle is greater than 180 degrees. Because if we swing open to 180 degrees, that's on the negative x-axis, and then we want to swing open further than that. So it's going to be bigger than 180 degrees, but smaller than 270 degrees, since it's in the third quadrant. So if I look at my triangle, this angle right here is this angle right here that it makes with the x-axis. We know that this distance here is 1, because that's given to us, and this distance here is the square root of 3. So I can use inverse tangent. Tangent of that angle is going to be opposite over adjacent, which is the square root of 3 over 1, which is square root of 3, on my calculator to find out what my angle is. If I'm in degree mode, my angle is going to give me is 60 degrees. 
So I know that this angle here in blue is 30 degrees. If I add 180 to that to see, to make sure that I'm in the third quadrant, I swing open 180 degrees and then another 60 degrees. That's going to give me 240 degrees. So when I write my final answer down, I can write it two ways. I can write it down the long way, which is given in this definition up here in the blue shaded box, that the number negative 1 minus the square root of 3i in polar form, so x2 cosine of 240 degrees plus i sine of 240 degrees. So that's one way to write it. And then if you want to write it shorthand, you could write it 2 cis 240 degrees. That's shorthand for saying my radius is 2. I'm doing cosine i sine with an angle of 240. Okay, for part B, we're going to do the same thing. We need to find our value of R and our angle. This one's a little bit easier because if you notice, my angle that it sweeps open is going to be in the first quadrant because 2 plus 2i, if I look at my i axis and my r axis, 2 plus 2i would be over here where I come out 2 in both directions. So I need to find the distance from zero. That's the first thing. And so I would take 2 squared plus 2 squared. That's going to give me 8. And so r squared is equal to 8. So r is going to be the square root of 8, which you can simplify as two square roots of 2. So that's our value of r. Now we got to figure out the angle that it sweeps open. Now this one we don't have to worry about adding 180 or adding 90 degrees to it or anything like that because it's in the first quadrant. Here is my triangle. Here is the angle that it's going to sweep open. We know that the hypotenuse is two square roots of two. We just found that. We know that this side is two and this side is two of my triangle. So I'm going to do inverse tangent of opposite over adjacent, which is 2 over 2, which is 1, and that's going to give me 45 degrees. So my angle for this one is 45 degrees. So I sweep open 45 degrees, and my r is 2 square roots of 2. So the two ways I can write this down, if I write it in shorthand, it would be 2 square roots of 2 cis, 45 degrees. If I write it out the long way, it would be 2 square roots of 2, and then I put cosine 45 degrees plus I sine 45 degrees. So to sum up, you always find your absolute value or your distance from zero, zero, or another way to look at it is the radius of your terminal side, like when you sweep open, how long, how long is that terminal side when you sweep open? That's this value. And then you have to find the angle that it sweeps open. If it's not in the first quadrant, you want to make sure that you're looking at the right quadrant and you either add 180 or subtract 90, whatever you need to do to find the correct angle if it's not in the first quadrant.